what's up? This is Tim Manley. Today, I'm going to share with you one big tip for photography. Most of the time, the condition is never what we expected, but the worst situation can create the best photo. And sometimes, in the good opportunity, one can ruin it if they don't improvise in the field. So I will explain to you exactly how to improvise. So what do I mean by that? Improvise uh, through the opening. When you're in the field, like right? when uh, Snaggletooth and the Blondie Bear was uh, coming closer, you have immediately look around and improvise. You can't just stay in the same place having your tripod. That's why I rarely use my tripod because I need to move very quickly. If you have your tripod, you're kind of stuck in the same background. And sometimes maybe there's a, a tall grass blocking you. And then by the time you move your tripod and stuff, you miss the moment. I still remember uh, one of my best friends, uh, Carl. He has been to Africa for many years. And he told me that one of his biggest dreams to see in Africa is to see leopard mating. I was like, I've never even seen a leopard. And then eventually I saw one. But if you have been to Africa, Kenya and those places, you will realize that leopard is not very easy to have the sighting. Even when you have the sighting, a lot of the time, the photography condition is not ideal. Like tall grass, uh, deep in the leaves and, and stuff like that, or harsh light, because they are very elusive. So to get a clean, nice photo of just one leopard is already difficult. Not to mention if you want to see leopard mating. However, this, this time in Kenya, I was with Arno at the time. Arno was my driver. Arno got some info that there may be leopard mating, and he said, hey man, and get ready because you, you you might never see them again so we drove to get to the, the spot and when we got there we see these two leopard and Arnold was like hey Tim and you want to move we were watching them for a while and for anybody who knows the uh, the leopard and the lions and those when they mate they would mate non-stop <laughs> so what they do is um, they will mate they will fall asleep and then in a few minutes they will wake up again and then they will mate and then they will fall asleep and then they will mate again like for three days and three nights non-stop so we got lucky on that and then when we saw the leopard Anna was saying hey do you want to move and we re also realized that the, the angle was not very good there were a lot of tall grass and sometimes you can't even see that we immediately saw that they tend to keep on moving in a certain angle and then the face was facing that angle and then we saw that over that angle the background was pretty nice and if i get really a low angle i may be able to get a decent background right? so we make sure that we would just drive further make a bigger route and make sure that we keep watching them and make sure they're comfortable and then we got to it another angle at that angle we have a much clear view of the the leopard so the reason why Carl told me that is his dream to see this uh, leopard mating was not because he wanted to see the leopard mating but because there is one thing that is ultra special this lucky encounter to see them mate when these big cats uh, when they mate what they do is first of all they would do something very interesting so the female would circle around the male with the tail kind of caressing the male and the male would not move and then the female would just like uh, dance around them it's almost like it's just magical and uh, it's almost like magic spell and it's like their inborn ability to be able to dance and to to do something like that so the female would just circle around the the male and then for after a few rounds and then the, the male would just uh, climb on the female and then they would mate when they're almost done the male would suddenly bite from the top side like bite on the neck of the female but what i heard is that the genital area for these um, uh, big cats have certain structure that when they are mating they would feel this like really like some almost like uncomfortable or special feeling so when they are almost done the female would feel very, very uncomfortable and she didn't like that feeling so what happens is that and also the male so the male would bite on the female and the female would turn her head towards the male and then would do a crazy wipe on the claw and so that that, that swipe can be deadly like imagine if uh, uh, the claw and the nail caught onto the eyes of the the, 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 the male it, it may make him make him blind because he already also knew about that action he would just like jump up so what Carl was hoping to see, he told me, is that mid-air jumping of the, the leopard. And a lot of the time, nobody can see them because when they mate, they, um, a lot of the time they are in deep bush because leopard is just very elusive. They don't like to be in the open. So you, you can see that the female is walking around and 
and then the male would get on top of the female. Hold on this, hold on to this second. So this is when she, he was biting and wait for that. The next moment is the most spectacular moment for any wildlife encounter. Look at that. You see that? So let me just play this again. You see um, the, the claw jumping up, avoiding the attack. In order to get a photo like that, you can't just keep on pressing the shutter. But by the time it's really jumping up and you press the shutter, it will be too late. So you almost have to predict. So you just watch this animal behavior all the time. And after you watch it once or twice, you have to improvise. These kind of things were just so rarely been seen. And now with the mirrorless, with all these new cameras, with the low light capabilities, we actually can get those photos with decent ISO, with enough shutter speed to capture those moments. I mean, this technology is not even there just a few years ago. So that's why when you encounter something, you really have to improvise. And I want to share with you one quote by Clint Eastwood in one of the movies, improvise, adapt, overcome. In life, in photography, I mean, life and photography is very relatable, right? So in the field, even when you have this special encounter, you always have to be aware to improvise, adapt and overcome. But one thing that I want to uh, remind you that is never ever cause any disturbance to the wildlife. Like I know it is very difficult, especially for beginning photographers. You want to get close. You want to get your best shots, but you may completely ruin this mating, right? If you really scare the, the leopard, they may abandon the, the mating and the babies will not be born, right? And when, when any animals have some kill and then they, they just got onto the carcass, you don't want to disturb them because they may abandon the food and then they may be hungry for a few days. It's not like we can just order Uber Eats and then get another meal. For them, it's like days of non-stop following the prey and do all this hard work in order to get their food for the baby. So if anything that you think can affect the animal's behavior, just give up those shots. Unless you are with a very experienced guide and make sure that this is not disturbing the animal, then, then you move very quietly, swiftly, right? That's what the term that is. So when you improvise, you always be super quiet.